Anarchism is a political philosophy that advocates stateless societies often defined as self-governed voluntary institutions, but that several authors have defined as more specific institutions based on non-hierarchical free associations. Anarchism holds the state to be undesirable, unnecessary, or harmful. While anti-statism is central, anarchism entails opposing authority or hierarchical organization in the conduct of human relations, including, but not limited to, the state system. Modern anarchism sprang from the secular or religious thought of the Enlightenment. The central tendency of anarchism as a mass social movement has been represented by anarcho-communism and anarcho-syndicalism, with individualist anarchism being primarily a literary phenomenon which did nevertheless affect the bigger currents, including the participation of individualists in large anarchist organizations. <laughs> Early history Most contemporary anthropologists as well as anarcho-primitivists agree that for the longest period before recorded history human society was without a separate class of established authority or formal political institutions. According to Harold Barclay, long before anarchism emerged as a distinct perspective, human beings lived for thousands of years in self-governing societies without a special ruling or political class. It was only after the rise of hierarchical societies that anarchist ideas were formulated as a critical response to and rejection of coercive political institutions and hierarchical social relationships. Taoism, which developed in ancient China, has been embraced by some anarchists as a source of anarchistic attitudes. The Taoist sages Lao Zi Lao Tzu, and Zhuang Zhou whose philosophy was a kind of philosophy based on a anti-polity stance and rejection of any kind of involvement in political movements or organizations and developed a philosophy of non-rule in the Zhuangzhou and Tao Te Ching and many Taoists in response lived an anarchist lifestyle. In 300 CE, Bao Jingyan explicitly argued that there should be neither lords nor subjects. Similarly, anarchistic tendencies in the West can be traced to the philosophers of ancient Greece such as Zeno of Sidium, the founder of Stoicism, and Aristippus, who said that the wise should not give up their liberty to the state. The usage of the words anarchia and anarchos, both meaning, without ruler, can be traced back to Homer's Iliad and Herodotus's histories. The first known political usage of the word anarchy appears in the play Seven Against Thebes by Aeschylus, dated at 467 BC. There, Antigone openly refuses to abide by the ruler's decree to leave her brother Polynices' body unburied as punishment for his participation in the attack on Thebes, saying that, "...even if no one else is willing to share in burying him I will bury him alone and risk the peril of burying my own brother. Nor am I ashamed to act in defiant opposition to the rulers of the city, Echosa apiston ten anarchian palae ekhausa apiston ten anarchian palae." Ancient Greece also saw the first Western instance of anarchism as a philosophical ideal. The Cynics Diogenes of Sinope and Crates of Thebes are both supposed to have advocated anarchistic forms of society, although little remains of their writings. Zeno of Sidium, the founder of Stoicism, who was much influenced by the Cynics, described his vision of a utopian society around 300 BC. Zeno's Republic advocates a form of anarchism in which there are no need for state structures. According to the 20th century anarchist Peter Kropotkin, Zeno was t he best exponent of anarchist philosophy in ancient Greece. As summarized by Kropotkin, Zeno repudiated the omnipotence of the state, its intervention and regimentation, and proclaimed the sovereignty of the moral law of the individual. Within Greek philosophy, Zeno's vision of a free community without government is opposed to the state utopia of Plato's Republic. Zeno argued that although the necessary instinct of self-preservation leads humans to egotism, nature has supplied a corrective to it by providing man with another instinct, namely sociability. Like many modern anarchists, he believed that if people follow their instincts, they will have no need of law courts or police, no temples and no public worship and use no money free gifts taking the place of the exchanges. However, Zeno's beliefs have only reached us as fragmentary quotations. In Athens, the year 404 BC was commonly referred to as the year of anarchy. According to the historian Xenophon, this happened even though Athens was at the time in fact under the rule of the oligarchy of the Thirty, installed by the Spartans following their victory in the Second Peloponnesian War and despite the fact that there was literally an archon in place nominated by the oligarchs in the person of Pythodoros of Trails. 
However, the Athenians refused to apply here their custom of calling the year by that archon's name since he was elected during the oligarchy and preferred to speak of it as the year of anarchy. The Greek philosophers Plato and Aristotle used the term anarchy negatively in association with democracy which they mistrusted as inherently vulnerable and prone to deteriorate into tyranny. Plato believed that the political corruption created by democracy loosens the natural hierarchy between social classes, genders and age groups, to the extent that anarchy finds a way into the private houses, and ends by getting among the animals and infecting them. Republic, Book 8. Aristotle spoke of it in Book 6 of Politics when discussing revolutions, saying that the upper classes may be motivated to stage a coup d'état by their contempt for the prevailing disorder and anarchy, ataxias chi anarchias ataxias chi anarchias in the affairs of the state. He also connected anarchy with democracy when he saw democratic features in tyrannies, namely license among slaves, anarchia daulin anarchia daulin as well as among women and children. Quote. A constitution of this sort, he concludes, will have a large number of supporters, as disorderly living, xenotactos xenotactos is pleasanter to the masses than sober living. It has also been argued that the Mutazilite and Najdite Muslims of 9th century Basra were anarchists. <laughs> Early modern era In Gargantua and Pantagruel (1532–1552), François Rabelais wrote of the Abbey of Thelema (Greek word meaning "will" or "wish"), an imaginary utopia whose motto was "Do as thou will." Around the same time, the French law student Étienne de la Bouteille wrote his discourse on voluntary servitude, in which he argued that tyranny resulted from voluntary submission and could be abolished by the people refusing to obey the authorities above them. There were a variety of anarchistic religious movements in Europe during the Middle Ages, including the Brothers and Sisters of the Free Spirit, the Klompdraggers, the Hussites, Adamites and the early Anabaptists. The Anabaptists of 16th-century Europe are sometimes considered to be religious forerunners of modern anarchism. In his History of Western Philosophy, Bertrand Russell writes that the Anabaptists repudiated all law, since they held that the good man will be guided at every moment by the Holy Spirit. F. Rom this primus they arrive at communism. Prior to Leo Tolstoy, Christian anarchism found one of its most articulate exponents in Gerard Winstanley, who was part of the Diggers movement in England during the English Civil War. Winstanley published a pamphlet calling for communal ownership and social and economic organization in small agrarian communities. Drawing on the Bible, he argued that the blessings of the earth should be common to all and none lord over others." Religious dissenter Roger Williams founded the colony of Providence, Rhode Island after being run out of the theocratic Puritan Massachusetts Bay Colony in 1636. Unlike the Puritans, he scrupulously purchased land from local American Indians for his settlement. While Williams was not explicitly anarchist, another Rhode Islander named Anne Hutchinson was. Hutchinson and her followers emigrated to Rhode Island in 1638, bought Aquidneck Island from the Native Americans and founded the town of Pocasset now Portsmouth. Another Rogue Island libertarian was Samuel Gordon. He and his followers were accused of being anarchists. The coastal area north of Albemarle Sound in what is now northeastern North Carolina was home to a quasi-anarchistic society in the mid-17th century. Described by Murray Rothbard as T, ethnically a part of the Virginia colony but in practice virtually independent. Albemarle was a haven for political and religious refugees, such as Quakers and dissident Presbyterians. As Rothbard has said, T, his semi-libertarian condition came to an end in 1663, when the English Crown included Albemarle in the Mammoth Carolina land grant bestowed on a group of eight feudal proprietors. Little is known of pre-1663 Albemarle, since historians display scant interest in stateless societies. When William Penn left his Quaker colony in Pennsylvania, the people stopped paying quitrent and any semblance of formal government evaporated. The Quakers treated the Native Americans with respect, bought land from them voluntarily and had even representation of Natives and European Americans on juries. According to Voltaire, the Shakamaxon Treaty was 
the only treaty between Indians and Christians that was never sworn to and that was never broken." The Quakers refused to provide any assistance to New England's Indian wars. Penn's attempt to impose government by appointing John Blackwell a non-Quaker military man as governor failed miserably. The first to use the term, anarchy. To mean something other than chaos was Louis Armand, Baron de la Hontan in his Nouveau Voyages dans l'Amérique septentrionale New Voyages in Northern America, 1703, where he described the indigenous American society which had no state, laws, prisons, priests or private property as being an anarchy. William Blake has also been said to espouse an anarchistic political position. Topic. Development of anarchism Modern anarchism sprang from the secular or religious thought of the Enlightenment, particularly Jean-Jacques Rousseau's arguments for the moral centrality of freedom. As part of the political turmoil of the 1790s in the wake of the French Revolution, William Godwin developed the first expression of modern anarchist thought. According to Peter Kropotkin, Godwin was the first to formulate the political and economical conceptions of anarchism, even though he did not give that name to the ideas developed in his work. While Godwin attached his anarchist ideas to an early Edmund Burke, Godwin is generally regarded as the founder of the school of thought known as philosophical anarchism. He argued in Political Justice 1793 that government has an inherently malevolent influence on society, and that it perpetuates dependency and ignorance. He thought that the spread of the use of reason to the masses would eventually cause government to wither away as an unnecessary force. Although he did not accord the state with moral legitimacy, he was against the use of revolutionary tactics for removing the government from power. Rather, he advocated for its replacement through a process of peaceful evolution. His aversion to the imposition of a rules based society led him to denounce, as a manifestation of the people's mental enslavement, the foundations of law, property rights, and even the institution of marriage. He considered the basic foundations of society as constraining the natural development of individuals to use their powers of reasoning to arrive at a mutually beneficial method of social organization. In each case, government and its institutions are shown to constrain the development of our capacity to live wholly in accordance with the full and free exercise of private judgment. In France, various anarchist currents were present during the revolutionary period, with some revolutionaries using the term anarchist in a positive light as early as September 1793. The enrages ones opposed revolutionary government as a contradiction in terms. Denouncing the Jacobin dictatorship, Jean Varlet wrote in 1794 that, "...government and revolution are incompatible, unless the people wishes to set its constituted authorities in permanent insurrection against itself." In his, "...manifesto of the equals." Sylvain Maréchal looked forward to the disappearance, once and for all, of the revolting distinction between rich and poor, of great and small, of masters and valets, of governors and governed. Topic: 19th century. Topic: Pierre Joseph Proudhon, Max Stirner, and the Paris Commune. The Frenchman Pierre Joseph Proudhon is regarded as the first self proclaimed anarchist, a label he adopted in his groundbreaking work What is Property, published in 1840. It is for this reason that some claim Proudhon is the founder of modern anarchist theory. He developed the theory of spontaneous order in society, where organization emerges without a central coordinator imposing its own idea of order against the wills of individuals acting in their own interests. His famous quote on the matter is. Liberty is the mother, not the daughter, of order. In What is Property, Proudhon answers with the famous accusation, Property is theft. In this work, he opposed the institution of decreed, Property, propriété, where owners have complete rights to use and abuse their property as they wish. He contrasted this with what he called possession, or limited ownership of resources and goods only while in more or less continuous use. Later, Proudhon also added that, "...property is liberty," and argued that it was a bulwark against state power. His opposition to the state, organized religion and certain capitalist practices inspired subsequent anarchists and made him one of the leading social thinkers of his time. While he opposed communism and favored remuneration for labor, he also opposed capitalist wage labor i.e. profiting from someone else's labor. 
He also opposed rent, interest and profit. Proudhon supported an economic system called mutualism and urged workers to form themselves into democratic societies, with equal conditions for all members, on pain of a relapse into feudalism." Under capitalism, he argued, employees are "...subordinated, exploited," and their "...permanent condition is one of obedience." A. Slave. Proudhon's ideas were influential within French working class movements and his followers were active in the Revolution of 1848 in France as well as the Paris Commune of 1871. Anarcho-communists such as Peter Kropotkin later disagreed with Proudhon for his support of private property in the products of labor i.e. wages, or remuneration for work done. Rather than free distribution of the products of labor, there were other anarchists active in the 1848 revolution in France, including Anselm Bellegarigue, Ernest Cordero and the early anarcho-communist Joseph Dejac, who was the first person to call himself a libertarian. Unlike Proudhon, Dejac argued that, "...it is not the product of his or her labor that the worker has a right to, but to the satisfaction of his or her needs, whatever may be their nature." Dejac was also a critic of Proudhon's anti-feminism and mutualism, adopting an anarcho-communist position. Returning to New York, he was able to serialize his book in his periodical Le Libertaire, Journal du Mouvement Social. Published in 27 issues from 9 June 1858 to 4 February 1861, Le Libertaire was the first anarcho-communist journal published in the United States. This was the first anarchist journal to use the term libertarian. An influential form of individualist anarchism called egoism, or egoist anarchism, was expounded by one of the earliest and best-known proponents of individualist anarchism, the German Max Stirner. Stirner's The Ego and Its Own, published in 1844, is a founding text of the philosophy. According to Stirner, the only limitation on the rights of the individual is their power to obtain what they desire, without regard for God, state, or morality. To Stirner, rights were spooks in the mind and he held that society does not exist, but the individuals are its reality. Stirner advocated self-assertion and foresaw unions of egoists, non-systematic associations continually renewed by all parties' support through an act of will, which Stirner proposed as a form of organization in place of the state. Egoist anarchists claim that egoism will foster genuine and spontaneous union between individuals. Egoism has inspired many interpretations of Stirner's philosophy. It was rediscovered and promoted by German philosophical anarchist and LGBT activist John Henry Mackay. In 1870, Mikhail Bakunin led a failed uprising in Lyon on the principles later exemplified by the Paris Commune, calling for a general uprising in response to the collapse of the French government during the Franco-Prussian War, seeking to transform an imperialist conflict into social revolution. In his letters to a Frenchman on the present crisis, he argued for a revolutionary alliance between the working class and the peasantry and set forth his formulation of what was later to become known as propaganda of the deed. Anarchist historian George Woodcock reports, The annual Congress of the International had not taken place in 1870 owing to the outbreak of the Paris Commune, and in 1871 the General Council called only a special conference in London. One delegate was able to attend from Spain and none from Italy, while a technical excuse, that they had split away from the Fédération Romande, was used to avoid inviting Bakunin's Swiss supporters. Thus only a tiny minority of anarchists was present, and the General Council's resolutions passed almost unanimously. Most of them were clearly directed against Bakunin and his followers. In 1872, the conflict climaxed with a final split between the two groups at the Hague Congress, where Bakunin and James Guillaume were expelled from the International and its headquarters were transferred to New York. In response, the Federalist sections formed their own International at the St. Imier Congress, adopting a revolutionary anarchist program. The Paris Commune was a government that briefly ruled Paris from 18 March more formally, from 28 March to 28 May 1871. The Commune was the result of an uprising in Paris after France was defeated in the Franco-Prussian War. Anarchists participated actively in the establishment of the Paris Commune. They included Louise Michel, the Recluse brothers Ali Recluse and Elysée Recluse and Eugène Varlin the latter murdered in the repression afterwards. 
As for the reforms initiated by the Commune, such as the reopening of workplaces as co-operatives, anarchists can see their ideas of associated labor beginning to be realized. Moreover, the Commune's ideas on federation obviously reflected the influence of Proudhon on French radical ideas. The Commune's vision of a communal France based on a federation of delegates bound by imperative mandates issued by their electors and subject to recall at any moment echoes Bakunin's and Proudhon's ideas Proudhon, like Bakunin, had argued in favor of the "...implementation of the binding mandate." in 1848 and for federation of communes, thus both economically and politically the Paris Commune was heavily influenced by anarchist ideas. George Woodcock manifests that a notable contribution to the activities of the Commune and particularly to the organization of public services was made by members of various anarchist factions, including the mutualists Corbett, Longuet, and Vermorel, the libertarian collectivists Varlin, Malin, and Lafrangue, and the Bakuninists Elie and Elise Recluse and Louise Michel. Louise Michel was an important anarchist participant in the Paris Commune. Initially, she worked as an ambulance woman, treating those injured on the barricades. During the Siege of Paris, she untiringly preached resistance to the Prussians. On the establishment of the Commune, she joined the National Guard. She offered to shoot Thiers and suggested the destruction of Paris by way of vengeance for its surrender. In December 1871, Michel was brought before the Sixth Council of War, charged with offences including trying to overthrow the government, encouraging citizens to arm themselves and herself using weapons and wearing a military uniform. Defiantly, she vowed to never renounce the commune and dared the judges to sentence her to death. Reportedly, Michel told the court. Since it seems that every heart that beats for freedom has no right to anything but a little slug of lead, I demand my share. If you let me live, I shall never cease to cry for vengeance." Michel was ultimately exiled to New Caledonia. Following the 1871 Paris Commune, the anarchist movement as the whole of the workers' movement was decapitated and deeply affected for years. <laughs> Individualist anarchism in the United States, free love and freethought Josiah Warren is widely regarded as the first American anarchist and the four-page weekly paper he edited during 1833, The Peaceful Revolutionist, was the first anarchist periodical published. For American anarchist historian Eunice Manette Schuster, I t is a parent less than pre greater than slash pre greater than dot 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 that Proudhonian anarchism was to be found in the United States at least as early as 1848 and that it was not conscious of its affinity to the individualist anarchism of Josiah Warren and Stephen Pearl Andrews. William B. Green presented this Proudhonian mutualism in its purest and most systematic form. Henry David Thoreau was an important early influence in individualist anarchist thought in the United States and Europe. Thoreau was an American author, poet, naturalist, tax resistor, development critic, surveyor, historian, philosopher and leading transcendentalist. He is best known for his books Walden, A Reflection Upon Simple Living in Natural Surroundings, and his essay, Civil Disobedience, An Argument for Individual Resistance to Civil Government in Moral Opposition to an Unjust State. Later, Benjamin Tucker fused Stirner's egoism with the economics of Warren and Proudhon in his eclectic influential publication Liberty. An important concern for American individualist anarchism was free love. Free love particularly stressed women's rights since most sexual laws discriminated against women, for example marriage laws and anti-birth control measures. The most important American free love journal was Lucifer the Lightbearer (1883–1907), edited by Moses Harmon and Lois Weisbrooker, But also there existed Ezra Haywood and Angela Haywood's The Word (1872–1890, 1892–1893). Free Society 1895 to 1897 as the Firebrand 1897 to 1904 as Free Society was a major anarchist newspaper in the United States at the end of the 19th and beginning of the 20th centuries. The publication staunchly advocated free love and women's rights and critiqued comstockery, censorship of sexual information. See Anthony Comstock. M. E. Lazarus was an important American individualist anarchist who promoted free love. In New York City's Greenwich Village, Bohemian feminists and socialists advocated self-realization and pleasure for women and also men in the here and now. 
They encouraged playing with sexual roles and sexuality and the openly bisexual radical Edna St. Vincent Millay and the lesbian anarchist Margaret Anderson were prominent among them. Discussion groups organized by the villagers were frequented by Emma Goldman, among others. Magnus Hirschfeld noted in 1923 that Goldman has campaigned boldly and steadfastly for individual rights, and especially for those deprived of their rights. Thus it came about that she was the first and only woman, indeed the first and only American, to take up the defense of homosexual love before the general public." In fact, before Goldman heterosexual anarchist Robert Reitzel spoke positively of homosexuality from the beginning of the 1890s in his Detroit-based German-language journal Der Arme Teufel. In Argentina, anarcha feminist Virginia Bolton published the newspaper called La Voz de la Mujer, The Woman's Voice, which was published nine times in Rosario between the 8th of January 1896 and the 1st of January 1897, and was revived briefly in 1901. Freethought also motivated activism in this movement. Freethought was a basically anti-Christian, anti-clerical movement, whose purpose was to make the individual politically and spiritually free to decide for himself on religious matters. A number of contributors to Liberty anarchist publication were prominent figures in both freethought and anarchism. The individualist anarchist George MacDonald was a co-editor of Freethought and for a time the truth seeker, E. C. Walker was co-editor of the excellent freethought, free love journal Lucifer, the light bearer. Many of the anarchists were ardent freethinkers and reprints from freethought papers such as Lucifer, the Light Bearer, Freethought and the Truth Seeker appeared in Liberty, with the Church being viewed as a common ally of the state and as a repressive force in and of itself. Some of the American individualist anarchists later in this era such as Benjamin Tucker abandoned natural rights positions and converted to Max Stirner's egoist anarchism. Rejecting the idea of moral rights, Tucker said that there were only two rights, the right of might, and the right of contract. After converting to egoist individualism, he also said, in times past less than pre greater than slash pre greater than dot 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 it was my habit to talk glibly of the right of man to land. It was a bad habit, and I long ago sloughed it off man's only right to land is his might over it. In adopting stern right egoism in 1886, Tucker rejected natural rights which had long been considered the foundation of libertarianism. This rejection galvanized the movement into fierce debates, with the natural rights proponents accusing the egoists of destroying libertarianism itself. So bitter was the conflict that a number of natural rights proponents withdrew from the pages of liberty in protest even though they had hitherto been among its frequent contributors. Thereafter, liberty championed egoism although its general content did not change significantly. Several periodicals were undoubtedly influenced by liberty's presentation of egoism. They included I published by Clarence Lee Swartz, edited by William Wallstein Gordak and J. William Lloyd all associates of liberty, and The Ego and the Egoist, both of which were edited by Edward H. Fulton. Among the egoist papers that Tucker followed were the German Der Eigene, edited by Adolf Brand, and The Eagle and the Serpent, issued from London. The latter, the most prominent English-language egoist journal, was published from 1898 to 1900 with the subtitle, A Journal of Egoistic Philosophy and Sociology. Among those American anarchists who adhered to egoism include Benjamin Tucker, John Beverly Robinson, Stephen T. Byington, Hutchins Hapgood, James L. Walker, Victor Yarrows and Edward H. Fulton. Robinson wrote an essay called, Egoism, in which he states that, M. Modern egoism, as propounded by Stirner and Nietzsche, and expounded by Ibsen, Shaw and others, is all these, but it is more. It is the realization by the individual that they are an individual, that, as far as they are concerned, they are the only individual." Byington was a one-time proponent of Georgism who later converted to egoist sternerist positions after associating with Tucker. He is known for translating two important anarchist works into English from German, Max Stirner's The Ego and Its Own and Paul Eltzbacher's Anarchism, Exponents of the Anarchist Philosophy also published by Dover with the title The Great Anarchists, Ideas and Teachings of Seven Major Thinkers. The First International and Collectivist Anarchism In Spain, Ramón de la Sagra established anarchist journal El Porvenir in La Coruña in 1845 which was inspired by Proudhon's ideas. 
The Catalan politician Francis Pi i Margall became the principal translator of Proudhon's works into Spanish and later briefly became President of Spain in 1873 while being the leader of the Democratic Republican Federal Party. According to George Woodcock, these translations were to have a profound and lasting effect on the development of Spanish anarchism after 1870, but before that time Proudhonian ideas, as interpreted by Pi, already provided much of the inspiration for the Federalist movement which sprang up in the early 1860s." According to the Encyclopædia Britannica during the Spanish Revolution of 1873, Pi y Margall attempted to establish a decentralized, or cantonalist, political system on Proudhonian lines. In Europe, harsh reaction followed the revolutions of 1848, during which ten countries had experienced brief or long term social upheaval as groups carried out nationalist uprisings. After most of these attempts at systematic change ended in failure, conservative elements took advantage of the divided groups of socialists, anarchists, liberals, and nationalists, to prevent further revolt. In 1864 the International Workingmen's Association sometimes called the First International United diverse revolutionary currents including French followers of Proudhon, Blanquists, Philadelphies, English trade unionists, socialists and social democrats. Due to its links to active workers' movements, the International became a significant organization. Karl Marx became a leading figure in the International and a member of its General Council. Proudhon's followers, the Mutualists, opposed Marx's state socialism, advocating political abstentionism and small property holdings. In 1868, following their unsuccessful participation in the League of Peace and Freedom LPF, Russian revolutionary Mikhail Bakunin and his collectivist anarchist associates joined the First International which had decided not to get involved with the LPF. They allied themselves with the Federalist Socialist sections of the International, who advocated the revolutionary overthrow of the state and the collectivization of property. At first, the collectivists worked with the Marxists to push the First International in a more revolutionary socialist direction. Subsequently, the International became polarized into two camps, with Marx and Bakunin as their respective figureheads. Bakunin characterized Marx's ideas as centralist and predicted that, if a Marxist party came to power, its leaders would simply take the place of the ruling class they had fought against. In 1872, the conflict climaxed with a final split between the two groups at the Hague Congress, where Bakunin and James Guillaume were expelled from the International and its headquarters were transferred to New York. In response, the Federalist sections formed their own International at the St. Imier Congress, adopting a revolutionary anarchist program. Woodcock also reports that the American individualist anarchists Lysander Spooner and William B. Green had been members of the First International. The emergence of anarcho-communism Anarcho-communism developed out of radical socialist currents after the French Revolution, but was first formulated as such in the Italian section of the First International. The theoretical work of Peter Kropotkin and Errico Malatesta took importance later as it expanded and developed pro-organizationalist and insurrectionary anti-organizationalist sections. Anarcho-communism proposes that the freest form of social organization would be a society composed of self-managing communes with collective use of the means of production, organized democratically and related to other communes through federation. While some anarcho-communists favor direct democracy, others feel that its majoritarianism can impede individual liberty and favor consensus democracy instead. In anarcho-communism, as money would be abolished individuals would not receive direct compensation for labor through sharing of profits or payment, but would have free access to the resources and surplus of the commune. As anarcho-communism emerged in the mid-19th century it had an intense debate with Bakuninist collectivism and as such within the anarchist movement over participation in syndicalism and the workers' movement as well as on other issues. In the theory of the revolution of anarcho-communism as elaborated by Peter Kropotkin and others. It is the risen people who are the real agent and not the working class organized in the enterprise the cells of the capitalist mode of production and seeking to assert itself as labor power, as a more rational industrial body or social brain manager than the employers." Between 1880 and 1890 and with the "...perspective of an imminent revolution," who was 
opposed to the official workers' movement, which was then in the process of formation general social democratization. They were opposed not only to political statist struggles but also to strikes which put forward wage or other claims, or which were organized by trade unions. However, while they were not opposed to strikes as such, they were opposed to trade unions and the struggle for the eight-hour day. This anti-reformist tendency was accompanied by an anti-organizational tendency, and its partisans declared themselves in favor of agitation amongst the unemployed for the expropriation of foodstuffs and other articles, for the expropriatory strike and, in some cases, for individual recuperation or acts of terrorism. After Peter Kropotkin along others decided to enter labor unions after their initial reservations, there remained the anti-syndicalist anarcho-communists, who in France were grouped around Sébastien Faure's Le Libertaire. From 1905 onwards, the Russian counterparts of these anti-syndicalist anarcho-communists become partisans of economic terrorism and illegal expropriations. Illegalism as a practice emerged and within it, t he acts of the anarchist bombers and assassins. Propaganda by the deed, and the anarchist burglars, individual reappropriation, expressed their desperation and their personal, violent rejection of an intolerable society. Moreover, they were clearly meant to be exemplary, invitations to revolt. Proponents and activists of these tactics, among others, included Johann Most, Luigi Galliani, Victor Serge, Giuseppe Shankabilla, and Severino Di Giovanni. The Italian Giuseppe Shankabilla wrote in Against Organization that, "...we don't want tactical programs, and consequently we don't want organization. Having established the aim, the goal to which we hold, we leave every anarchist free to choose from the means that his sense, his education, his temperament, his fighting spirit suggest to him as best. We don't form fixed programs and we don't form small or great parties." But we come together spontaneously, and not with permanent criteria, according to momentary affinities for a specific purpose, and we constantly change these groups as soon as the purpose for which we had associated ceases to be, and other aims and needs arise and develop in us and push us to seek new collaborators, people who think as we do in the specific circumstance. By the 1880s, anarcho-communism was already present in the United States as can be seen in the publication of the journal Freedom, a revolutionary anarchist communist monthly by Lucy Parsons and Lizzie Holmes. Parsons debated in her time in the United States with fellow anarcho-communist Emma Goldman over issues of free love and feminism. Another anarcho-communist journal later appeared in the United States called The Firebrand. Most anarchist publications in the United States were in Yiddish, German, or Russian, but Free Society was published in English, permitting the dissemination of anarchist communist thought to English-speaking populations in the United States. Around that time these American anarcho-communist sectors entered in debate with the individualist anarchist group around Benjamin Tucker. In February 1888, Berkman left for the United States from his native Russia. Soon after his arrival in New York City, Berkman became an anarchist through his involvement with groups that had formed to campaign to free the men convicted of the 1886 Haymarket bombing. Berkman as well as Emma Goldman soon came under the influence of Johann Most, the best-known anarchist in the United States and an advocate of propaganda of the deed—attentat, or violence carried out to encourage the masses to revolt. Berkman became a typesetter for Most's newspaper Freiheit. According to anarchist historian Max Netlau, the first use of the term libertarian communism was in November 1880, when a French anarchist congress employed it to more clearly identify its doctrines. The French anarchist journalist Sébastien Faure started the weekly paper Le Libertaire in 1895. 20th century Topic. Organized labor and anarcho-syndicalism The anti-authoritarian sections of the First International were the precursors of the anarcho-syndicalists, seeking to replace the privilege and authority of the state with the free and spontaneous organization of labor. In 1886, the Federation of Organized Trades and Labor Unions FOTLU of the United States and Canada unanimously set 1 May 1886, as the date by which the eight-hour workday would become standard. 
In response, unions across the United States prepared a general strike in support of the event. On 3 May, in Chicago, a fight broke out when strikebreakers attempted to cross the picket line, and two workers died when police opened fire upon the crowd. The next day, 4 May, anarchists staged a rally at Chicago's Haymarket Square. A bomb was thrown by an unknown party near the conclusion of the rally, killing an officer. In the ensuing panic, police opened fire on the crowd and each other. Seven police officers and at least four workers were killed. Eight anarchists directly and indirectly related to the organizers of the rally were arrested and charged with the murder of the deceased officer. The men became international political celebrities among the labor movement. Four of the men were executed and a fifth committed suicide prior to his own execution. The incident became known as the Haymarket Affair, and was a setback for the labor movement and the struggle for the eight-hour day. In 1890 a second attempt, this time international in scope, to organize for the eight-hour day was made. The event also had the secondary purpose of memorializing workers killed as a result of the Haymarket Affair. Although it had initially been conceived as a once-off event, by the following year the celebration of International Workers' Day on May Day had become firmly established as an international workers' holiday. In 1907, the International Anarchist Congress of Amsterdam gathered delegates from 14 different countries, among which important figures of the anarchist movement, including Errico Malatesta, Pierre Monnet, Luigi Fabri, Benoit Brauchu, Emma Goldman, Rudolf Rocker, and Christian Cornelissen. Various themes were treated during the Congress, in particular concerning the organization of the anarchist movement, popular education issues, the general strike or antimilitarism. A central debate concerned the relation between anarchism and syndicalism or trade unionism. Malatesta and Monnet were in particular disagreement themselves on this issue, as the latter thought that syndicalism was revolutionary and would create the conditions of a social revolution, while Malatesta did not consider syndicalism by itself sufficient. He thought that the trade union movement was reformist and even conservative, citing as essentially bourgeois and anti-worker the phenomenon of professional union officials. Malatesta warned that the syndicalists' aims were in perpetuating syndicalism itself, whereas anarchists must always have anarchy as their end and consequently refrain from committing to any particular method of achieving it. The Spanish Workers' Federation in 1881 was the first major anarcho syndicalist movement. Anarchist trade union federations were of special importance in Spain. The most successful was the Confederación Nacional del Trabajo, National Confederation of Labor, CNT, founded in 1910. Before the 1940s, the CNT was the major force in Spanish working-class politics, attracting 1.58 million members at one point and playing a major role in the Spanish Civil War. The CNT was affiliated with the International Workers' Association, a federation of anarcho-syndicalist trade unions founded in 1922, with delegates representing 2 million workers from 15 countries in Europe and Latin America. In Latin America in particular. The anarchists quickly became active in organizing craft and industrial workers throughout South and Central America, and until the early 1920s most of the trade unions in Mexico, Brazil, Peru, Chile, and Argentina were anarcho-syndicalist in general outlook. The prestige of the Spanish CNT as a revolutionary organization was undoubtedly to a great extent responsible for this situation. The largest and most militant of these organizations was the Federación Obrera Regional Argentina. Less than pre greater than slash pre greater than dot 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 it grew quickly to a membership of nearly a quarter of a million, which dwarfed the rival social democratic unions. According to Lucien van der Walt, once you look globally, you find mass movements of comparable, sometimes even greater, influence in countries ranging from Argentina, to China, to Cuba, to Mexico, to Peru, to the Ukraine and so on. What gets a bit lost in studies that focus on Western Europe is that most of anarchist and syndicalist history took place elsewhere. In other words, you can't understand anarchism unless you understand that much of its history was in the East and the South, not only in the North and the West." The anarchist and syndicalist canon must be understood as a «global» one, that must «include figures from within but also without the West», ideally including figures like Li Pei Khan and Lu Shifu, Shifu 
of China, James Connolly of Ireland, Armando Borghi and Errico Malatesta of Italy, Nestor Makhno and Peter Arshinov, of the Ukraine, Juana Ruco Buella of Argentina, Lucia Sanchez Sayernil and Jamie Ballius of Spain, Ricardo Flores Magan, Juana Belen Gutierrez de Mendoza, Antonio Gomes y Soto and Praxtis Guerrero of Mexico, Ferdinand Domela Nuwenhus of the Netherlands, Asugi Sake, Kotoku Shusu and Kano Sugako of Japan, Lucy Parsons and Emma Goldman of the United States. States, Enrique Roig de San Martín of Cuba, Shin Cheho and Kim Jwa Jin of Korea, Rudolf Rocker of Germany, Neno Vasco and Maria Lacerda de Mora of Brazil, Abraham Gillen of Spain and Uruguay, S.P. Bunting and T.W. Thibidi of South Africa, Manuel González Prada in Peru and Alejo Capello in Ecuador. Topic. Propaganda of the deed and illegalism Some anarchists, such as Johann Most, advocated publicizing violent acts of retaliation against counter-revolutionaries because, "...we preach not only action in and for itself, but also action as propaganda." By the 1880s, the slogan, "...propaganda of the deed," had begun to be used both within and outside of the anarchist movement to refer to individual bombings, regicides and tyrannicides. From 1905 onwards, the Russian counterparts of these anti-syndicalist anarchist communists become partisans of economic terrorism and illegal expropriations. Illegalism as a practice emerged and within it. The acts of the anarchist bombers and assassins, propaganda by the deed, and the anarchist burglars, individual reappropriation, expressed their desperation and their personal, violent rejection of an intolerable society. Moreover, they were clearly meant to be exemplary, invitations to revolt. France's Bono Gang was the most famous group to embrace illegalism. However, as soon as 1887, important figures in the anarchist movement distanced themselves from such individual acts. Peter Kropotkin thus wrote that year in La Revolte that, A structure based on centuries of history cannot be destroyed with a few kilos of dynamite. A variety of anarchists advocated the abandonment of these sorts of tactics in favor of collective revolutionary action, for example through the trade union movement. The anarcho-syndicalist, Fernand Pelloutier, argued in 1895 for renewed anarchist involvement in the labor movement on the basis that anarchism could do very well without the individual dynamiter. State repression including the infamous 1894 French Lois Scolaritz of the anarchist and labor movements following the few successful bombings and assassinations may have contributed to the abandonment of these kinds of tactics, although reciprocally state repression, in the first place, may have played a role in these isolated acts. The dismemberment of the French socialist movement, into many groups and, following the suppression of the 1871 Paris Commune, the execution and exile of many communards to penal colonies, favoured individualist political expression and acts. Numerous heads of state were assassinated between 1881 and 1914 by members of the anarchist movement. On 6 September 1901, the American anarchist Leon Cholgosh went armed with a .32 caliber Iver Johnson. Safety automatic. Revolver serial number 463,344 he had purchased four days earlier for $4.50 and assassinated the President of the United States William McKinley. Cholgosh was convicted on 24 September 1901 after the jury deliberated for only one hour. On 26 September, the jury unanimously recommended the death penalty and was electrocuted by three jolts, each of 1,800 volts, in Auburn Prison on 29 October 1901, just 45 days after his victim's death. Emma Goldman was arrested on suspicion of being involved in the assassination, but was released, due to insufficient evidence. She later incurred a great deal of negative publicity when she published, The Tragedy at Buffalo. In the article, she compared Cholgosh to Marcus Junius Brutus, the killer of Julius Caesar, and called McKinley the "...president of the money kings and trust magnates." Other anarchists and radicals were unwilling to support Goldman's effort to aid Cholgosh, believing that he had harmed the movement. Bombings were associated in the media with anarchists because international terrorism arose during this time period with the widespread distribution of dynamite. This image remains to this day. Propaganda of the deed was abandoned by the vast majority of the anarchist movement after World War I 1914 and the 1917 October Revolution. 
European individualist anarchism and anarchist influence in Bohemia and the arts European individualist anarchism proceeded from the roots laid by William Godwin, Pierre-Joseph Proudhon and Max Stirner. Individualist anarchism expanded and diversified through Europe, incorporating influences from North American individualist anarchism. Autonomy Individual was a French individualist anarchist publication that ran from 1887 to 1888. It was edited by Jean-Baptiste Louche, Charles Scheffer and Georges de Hermé. Later this tradition continued with such intellectuals as Albert Libertad, André Lorula, Émile Armand, Victor Serge, Zo Daxa and Rorette Maitregine developed theory in the main individualist anarchist journal in France, L'Anarchy in 1905. Outside this journal, Han Reiner wrote Petit Manuel Individualist 1903. Later appeared the journal Landhors created by Zo Daxa in 1891. Anarchist naturism was promoted by Henri Zisli, Emile Gravel and Georges Boutard. Anarcho-naturism advocated vegetarianism, nudism, hiking and an ecological world view within anarchist groups and outside them. Freethought as a philosophical position and as activism was important in European individualist anarchism and it emphasized criticism of religious dogmas and of the church. This tendencies will continue in French individualist anarchism in the work and activism of Charles Auguste Bontemps and others. In this sense, the theoretical positions and the vital experiences of French individualism are deeply iconoclastic and scandalous, even within libertarian circles. The call of nudist naturism, the strong defense of birth control methods, the idea of unions of egoists with the sole justification of sexual practices, that will try to put in practice, not without difficulties, will establish a way of thought and action, and will result in sympathy within some, and a strong rejection within others." In Italy, individualist anarchism had a strong tendency towards illegalism and violent propaganda by the deed similar to French individualist anarchism but perhaps more extreme. The theoretical seeds of current insurrectionary anarchism were already laid out at the end of 19th century Italy in a combination of individualist anarchism criticism of permanent groups and organization with a socialist class struggle worldview. During the early 20th century it is important the intellectual work of individualist anarchist Renzo Novatore. Novator collaborated in the individualist anarchist journal Iconoclasta, alongside the young sternerist illegalist Bruno Philippespain received the influence of American individualist anarchism but most importantly it was related to the French currents. Around the start of the 20th century, individualism in Spain takes force through the efforts of people such as Dorado Montero, Ricardo Mella, Federico Arales and J. L. Azaldi who will translate her French and American individualists. Important in this respect were also magazines such as La Idea Libre, La Revista Blanca, Etica, Initiales, All Marhin and Nosotros. In Germany the Scottish-German John Henry Mackay became the most important propagandist for individualist anarchist ideas. Adolf Brand was a German writer, sternerist anarchist and pioneering campaigner for the acceptance of male bisexuality and homosexuality. Brand published a German homosexual periodical, Der Eigene in 1896. Another important tendency within individualist anarchist currents emphasizes individual subjective exploration and defiance of social conventions. Individualist anarchist philosophy attracted amongst artists, intellectuals and the well-read, urban middle classes in general, as such Murray Bookchin describes a lot of individualist anarchism as people who expressed their opposition in uniquely personal forms, especially in fiery tracts, outrageous behavior, and aberrant lifestyles in the cultural ghettos of fin de siècle New York, Paris, and London. As a credo, individualist anarchism remained largely a bohemian lifestyle, most conspicuous in its demands for sexual freedom free love and enamored of innovations in art, behavior, and clothing. In this way free love currents and other radical lifestyles such as naturism had popularity among individualist anarchists. The Irish anarchist writer of the decadent movement Oscar Wilde influenced individualist anarchists such as Renzo Novatore and gained the admiration of Benjamin Tucker. Oscar Wilde stated in an interview that he believed he was something of an anarchist, but previously said, in the past I was a poet and a tyrant. 
Now I am an anarchist and artist, for anarchist historian David Goodway. Topic Revolutionary wave Ferdinando Nicola Sacco and Bartolomeo Vanzetti were suspected anarchists who were convicted of murdering two men during the armed robbery of a shoe factory in South Braintree, Massachusetts, United States in 1920. After a controversial trial and a series of appeals, the two Italian immigrants were executed on 23 August 1927. Since their deaths, critical opinion has overwhelmingly felt that the two men were convicted largely on their anarchist political beliefs and unjustly executed. In 1977, Massachusetts Governor Michael Dukakis issued a proclamation that Sacco and Vanzetti had been unfairly tried and convicted and that any disgrace should be forever removed from their names. Many famous socialists and intellectuals campaigned for a retrial without success. John Dos Passos came to Boston to cover the case as a journalist, stayed to author a pamphlet called Facing the Chair, and was arrested in a demonstration on 10 August 1927, along with Dorothy Parker. After being arrested while picketing the State House, Edna St. Vincent Millay pleaded her case to the governor in person and then wrote an appeal, I cry to you with a million voices, answer our doubt, there is need in Massachusetts of a great man tonight. Others who wrote to Fuller or signed petitions included Albert Einstein, George Bernard Shaw and H. G. Wells. The President of the American Federation of Labor cited the long period of time intervening between the commission of the crime and the final decision of the court as well as the mental and physical anguish which Sacco and Vanzetti must have undergone during the past seven years in a telegram to the governor. In August 1927, the Industrial Workers of the World IWW called for a three-day nationwide walkout to protest the pending executions. The most notable response came in the Walsenburg Coal District of Colorado, where 1,132 out of 1,167 miners participated, which led directly to the Colorado Coal Strike of 1927. Italian anarchist Severino Di Giovanni, one of the most vocal supporters of Sacco and Vanzetti in Argentina, bombed the American embassy in Buenos Aires a few hours after Sacco and Vanzetti were condemned to death. A few days after the executions, Sacco's widow thanked Di Giovanni by letter for his support and added that the director of the tobacco firm Combinados had offered to produce a cigarette brand named Sacco and Vanzetti. On 26 November 1927, Di Giovanni and others bombed a Combinados tobacco shop. Anarchists participated alongside the Bolsheviks in both February and October revolutions, and were initially enthusiastic about the Bolshevik Revolution. However, the Bolsheviks soon turned against the anarchists and other left-wing opposition, a conflict that culminated in the 1921 Kronstadt Rebellion which the new government repressed. Anarchists in central Russia were either imprisoned, driven underground or joined the victorious Bolsheviks. The anarchists from Petrograd and Moscow fled to the Ukraine. There, in the Free Territory, they fought in the Civil War against the Whites a grouping of monarchists and other opponents of the October Revolution and then the Bolsheviks as part of the Revolutionary Insurrectionary Army of Ukraine led by Nestor Makhno, who established an anarchist society in the region for a number of months. The modern schools, also called Ferrer schools, were United States schools, established in the early 20th century, that were modeled after the Escuela Moderna of Francis Ferrer i Guardia, the Catalan educator and anarchist. They were an important part of the anarchist, free schooling, socialist, and labor movements in the U.S., intended to educate the working classes from a secular, class-conscious perspective. The modern schools imparted daytime academic classes for children, and nighttime continuing education lectures for adults. The first, and most notable, of the modern schools was founded in New York City, in 1911, two years after Francis Ferrer i Guardia's execution for sedition in monarchist Spain on 18 October 1909. Commonly called the Ferrer Center, it was founded by notable anarchists, including Leonard Abbott, Alexander Berkman, Voltairine de Clare and Emma Goldman, First meeting on St. Mark's Place, in Manhattan's Lower East Side, but twice moved elsewhere, first within Lower Manhattan, then to Harlem. Besides Berkman and Goldman, the Ferrer Center faculty included the Ashcan school painters Robert Henri and George Bellows, and its guest lecturers included writers and political activists such as Margaret Sanger, Jack London, and Upton Sinclair. Student Magda Shanewetter, recalled that the school used Montessori methods and equipment, and emphasized academic freedom rather than fixed subjects, such as spelling and arithmetic. The Modern School magazine originally began as a newsletter for parents, when the school was in New York City, printed with the manual printing press used in teaching printing as a profession. 
After moving to the Stelton Colony, New Jersey, the magazine's content expanded to poetry, prose, art, and libertarian education articles. The cover emblem and interior graphics were designed by Rockwell Kent. Acknowledging the urban danger to their school, the organizers bought 68 acres square meters in Piscataway Township, New Jersey, and moved there in 1914, becoming the center of the Stelton Colony. Moreover, beyond New York City, the Ferrer Colony and Modern School was founded c. 1910-1915 as a modern school-based community, that endured some 40 years. In 1933, James and Nellie Dick, who earlier had been principals of the Stelton Modern School, founded the Modern School in Lakewood, New Jersey, which survived the original Modern School, the Ferrer Center, becoming the final surviving such school, lasting until 1958. Expelled American anarchists Emma Goldman and Alexander Berkman were amongst those agitating in response to Bolshevik policy and the suppression of the Kronstadt uprising, before they left Russia. Both wrote accounts of their experiences in Russia, criticizing the amount of control the Bolsheviks exercised. For them, Bakunin's predictions about the consequences of Marxist rule that the rulers of the new, socialist, Marxist state would become a new elite had proved all too true. The victory of the Bolsheviks in the October Revolution and the resulting Russian Civil War did serious damage to anarchist movements internationally. Many workers and activists saw Bolshevik success as setting an example. Communist parties grew at the expense of anarchism and other socialist movements. In France and the United States, for example, members of the major syndicalist movements of the CGT and IWW left the organizations and joined the Communist International. The revolutionary wave of 1917 to 23 saw the active participation of anarchists in varying degrees of protagonism. In the German uprising known as the German Revolution of 1918–1919 the Bavarian Soviet Republic the anarchists Gustav Landauer, Silvio Gessel and Eric Mussum had important leadership positions within the revolutionary councilist structures. In the Italian events known as the Biennio Rosso the anarcho-syndicalist trade union Union Syndicale Italiana grew to 800,000 members and the influence of the Italian Anarchist Union 20,000 members plus Umanita Nova, its daily paper grew accordingly. Anarchists were the first to suggest occupying workplaces. In the Mexican Revolution the Mexican Liberal Party was established and during the early 1910s it led a series of military offensives leading to the conquest and occupation of certain towns and districts in Baja California with the leadership of anarcho-communist Ricardo Flores Magan. In Paris, the Dielo Truda group of Russian anarchist exiles, which included Nestor Makhno, concluded that anarchists needed to develop new forms of organization in response to the structures of Bolshevism. Their 1926 manifesto, called the Organizational Platform of the General Union of Anarchists, draft, was supported. Platformist groups active today include the Workers' Solidarity Movement in Ireland and the North Eastern Federation of Anarchist Communists of North America. Synthesis anarchism emerged as an organizational alternative to platformism which tries to join anarchists of different tendencies under the principles of anarchism without adjectives. In the 1920s this form found as its main proponents Volin and Sebastian Faure. It is the main principle behind the anarchist federations grouped around the contemporary global international of anarchist federations. The rise of fascism In the 1920s and 1930s, the rise of fascism in Europe transformed anarchism's conflict with the state. Italy saw the first struggles between anarchists and fascists. Italian anarchists played a key role in the anti-fascist organization Arditi del Popolo, which was strongest in areas with anarchist traditions, and achieved some success in their activism, such as repelling blackshirts in the anarchist stronghold of Parma in August 1922. The veteran Italian anarchist, Luigi Fabri, was one of the first critical theorists of fascism, describing it as the preventive counter-revolution. Six in France, where the far right leagues came close to insurrection in the February 1934 riots, anarchists divided over a united front policy. In Spain, the CNT initially refused to join a popular front electoral alliance, and abstention by CNT supporters led to a right wing election victory. In 1936, the CNT changed its policy, and anarchist votes helped bring the popular front back to power. Months later, the former ruling class responded with an attempted coup causing the Spanish Civil War 1936 
In response to the army rebellion, an anarchist-inspired movement of peasants and workers, supported by armed militias, took control of Barcelona and of large areas of rural Spain where they collectivized the land. However, even before the fascist victory in 1939 the anarchists were losing ground in a bitter struggle with the Stalinists, who controlled the distribution of military aid to the Republican cause from the Soviet Union. Stalinist-led troops suppressed the collectives and persecuted both dissident Marxists and anarchists. Anarchists in France and Italy were active in the resistance during World War II. In Germany, Erich Mussem was arrested on charges unknown in the early morning hours of the 28th of February 1933, within a few hours after the Reichstag fire in Berlin. Joseph Goebbels, the Nazi propaganda minister, labeled him as one of those Jewish subversives. It is alleged that Mussum was planning to flee to Switzerland within the next day. Over the next 17 months, he would be imprisoned in the concentration camps at Sonnenberg, Brandenburg and finally, Oranienburg. On 2 February 1934, Mussum was transferred to the concentration camp at Oranienburg. The beatings and torture continued, until finally on the night of 9 July 1934, Mussum was tortured and murdered by the guards, his battered corpse found hanging in a latrine the next morning. An official Nazi report dated the 11th of July stated that Eric Mussum committed suicide, hanging himself while in protective custody at Oranienburg. However, a report from Prague on the 20th of July 1934 in the New York Times stated otherwise. His widow declared this evening that, when she was first allowed to visit her husband after his arrest, his face was so swollen by beating that she could not recognize him. He was assigned to the task of cleaning toilets and staircases and storm troopers amused themselves by spitting in his face, she added. On 8 July, last, she saw him for the last time alive. Despite the tortures he had undergone for 15 months, she declared, he was cheerful, and she knew at once when his suicide was reported to her three days later that it was untrue. When she told the police that they had murdered him, she asserted they shrugged their shoulders and laughed. A post-mortem examination was refused, according to Frau Mussum, but storm troopers, incensed with their new commanders, showed her the body which bore unmistakable signs of strangulation, with the back of the skull shattered as if Herr Mussum had been dragged across the parade ground. The Spanish Revolution The Iberian Anarchist Federation was founded in Valencia in 1927 after a preliminary meeting the previous year in Marseille, France, to campaign for keeping the CNT on an anarchist path by challenging the bureaucracy of the CNT, which it viewed as having grown to become a mediating link between labor and capital, rather than a representative of the working class. This issue was becoming especially tense as Miguel Primo de Rivera's dictatorial regime took over in Spain and engineered a crackdown on labor movements. In Spain, the National Anarcho-Syndicalist Trade Union Confederación Nacional del Trabajo initially refused to join a popular front electoral alliance, and abstention by CNT supporters led to a right-wing election victory. But in 1936, the CNT changed its policy and anarchist votes helped bring the popular front back to power. Months later, the former ruling class responded with an attempted coup causing the Spanish Civil War 1936 in response to the army rebellion, an anarchist-inspired movement of peasants and workers, supported by armed militias, took control of Barcelona and of large areas of rural Spain where they collectivized the land. But even before the fascist victory in 1939, the anarchists were losing ground in a bitter struggle with the Stalinists, who controlled the distribution of military aid to the Republican cause from the Soviet Union. The events known as the Spanish Revolution was a workers' social revolution that began during the outbreak of the Spanish Civil War in 1936 and resulted in the widespread implementation of anarchist and more broadly libertarian socialist organizational principles throughout various portions of the country for two to three years, primarily Catalonia, Aragon, Andalusia, and parts of the Levante. Much of Spain's economy was put under worker control. In anarchist strongholds like Catalonia, the figure was as high as 75%, but lower in areas with heavy Communist Party of Spain influence, as the Soviet Allied Party actively resisted attempts at collectivization enactment. Factories were run through worker committees, agrarian areas became collectivized and run as libertarian communes. Anarchist historian Sam Dolgoff estimated that about 8 million people participated directly or at least indirectly in the Spanish Revolution, which he claimed, 
came closer to realizing the ideal of the free stateless society on a vast scale than any other revolution in history." Spanish Communist Party-led troops suppressed the collectives and persecuted both dissident Marxists and anarchists. The prominent Italian anarchist Camillo Berneri, who volunteered to fight against Franco, was killed instead in Spain by gunmen associated with the Spanish Communist Party. So, when clashes with the Communist Party broke out, his house, where he lived with other anarchists, was attacked on 4 May 1937. Leaving Radio Barcelona, Berneri set off for the Plaza de la Generalitat, where some Stalinists shouted after him. Before he could turn and look, they opened fire with machine guns, and left his dead body there on the street." Libertarian possibilism was a political current within the early 20th century Spanish anarchist movement which advocated achieving the anarchist ends of ending the state and capitalism with participation inside structures of contemporary parliamentary democracy. The name of this political position appeared for the first time between 1922–1923 within the discourse of Catalan anarcho-syndicalist Salvador Segui when he said, "...we have to intervene in politics in order to take over the positions of the bourgeois." During autumn of 1931 the «Manifesto of the Thirty was published by militants of the anarchist trade union Confederación Nacional del Trabajo. Among those who signed it there was the CNT General Secretary 1922-1923 Joan Perro, Angel Pestaña CNT General Secretary in 1929, and Juan López Sánchez. They were called Trentismo and they were calling for a more moderate political line within the Spanish anarchist movement. In 1932 they established the Syndicalist Party which participates in the 1936 Spanish general elections and proceed to be a part of the leftist coalition of parties known as the Popular Front obtaining two congressmen Pestaña and Benito Pabon. In November 1936 the Popular Front government appointed the prominent anarcho-feminist Federica Montseny as Minister of Health. In doing so, she became the first woman in Spanish history to be a cabinet minister. When the Republican forces lost the Spanish Civil War, the city of Madrid was turned over to the Francoist forces in 1939 by the last non-Francoist mayor of the city, the anarchist Melcher Rodriguez Garcia. Post-war years Anarchism sought to reorganize itself after the war. The Mexican Anarchist Federation was established on 1945 after the Anarchist Federation of the Center united with the Anarchist Federation of the Federal District. In the early 1940s Antifascist International Solidarity and Federation of Anarchist Groups of Cuba merge into the large national organization Asociación Libertaria de Cuba Cuban Libertarian Association. From 1944 to 1947, the Bulgarian Anarchist Communist Federation re-emerges as part of a factory and workplace committee movement, but is repressed by the new communist regime. In 1945 in France the Fédération Anarchiste is established and the also synthesist Federazione Anarchica Italiana is founded in Italy. Korean anarchists form the League of Free Social Constructors in September 1945 and in 1946 the Japanese Anarchist Federation is founded. An international anarchist congress with delegates from across Europe is held in Paris in May 1948. In 1956 the Uruguayan Anarchist Federation is founded. In 1955 the Anarcho-Communist Federation of Argentina renames itself as the Argentine Libertarian Federation. After World War II, an appeal in the Frey Arbiter Stein detailing the plight of German anarchists and called for Americans to support them. By February 1946, the sending of aid parcels to anarchists in Germany was a large-scale operation. In 1947, Rudolf Rocker published Zur Betrachtung der Lage in Deutschland regarding the portrayal of the situation in Germany about the impossibility of another anarchist movement in Germany. It became the first post-World War II anarchist writing to be distributed in Germany. Rocker thought young Germans were all either totally cynical or inclined to fascism and awaited a new generation to grow up before anarchism could bloom once again in the country. Nevertheless, the Federation of Libertarian Socialists FFS was founded in 1947 by former FOD members. Rocker wrote for its organ, Die Freie Gesellschaft, which survived until 1953. In 1949, Rocker published another well-known work. On 10 September 1958, Rocker died in the Mohegan Colony. 
The Syndicalist Workers' Federation was a syndicalist group inactive in post-war Britain, and one of the Solidarity Federation's earliest predecessors. It was formed in 1950 by members of the dissolved Anarchist Federation of Britain. Unlike the AFB, which was influenced by anarcho-syndicalist ideas but ultimately not syndicalist itself, the SWF decided to pursue a more definitely syndicalist, worker-centered strategy from the outset. The debate on the issue of organization within anarchism took importance once again in this period, especially in the anarchist movements of Italy and France. The Fédération Anarchiste FA was founded in Paris on 2 December 1945, and elected the platformist anarcho-communist George Fontenis as its first secretary the next year. It was composed of a majority of activists from the former FA which supported Voline's synthesis and some members of the former Union Anarchist, which supported the CNTFAI support to the Republican government during the Spanish Civil War, as well as some young resistance. Within the synthesist anarchist organization, the Fédération Anarchist, there existed an individualist anarchist tendency alongside anarcho-communist and anarcho-syndicalist currents. Individualist anarchists participating inside the Fédération Anarchist included Charles-Auguste Bontemps, Georges Vinci and André Arru. On 1950 a clandestine group formed within the FA called Organisation Ponce Bataille led by Georges Fontenis. The OPB pushed for a move which saw the FA change its name into the Fédération Communiste Libertaire FCL after the 1953 Congress in Paris, while an article in Le Libertaire indicated the end of the cooperation with the French Surrealist group led by André Breton. The new decision-making process was founded on unanimity, each person has a right of veto on the orientations of the Federation. The FCL published the same year the Manifeste du Communisme Libertaire. Several groups quit the FCL in December 1955, disagreeing with the decision to present «revolutionary candidates» to the legislative elections. On 15–20 August 1954, the Ve Intercontinental Plenum of the CNT took place. A group called Entente Anarchist appeared which was formed of militants who didn't like the new ideological orientation that the OPB was giving the FCL seeing it was authoritarian and almost Marxist. The FCL lasted until 1956 just after it participated in state legislative elections with ten candidates. This move alienated some members of the FCL and thus produced the end of the organization. A group of militants who didn't agree with the FA turning into FCL reorganized a new federation anarchist which was established on December 1953. This included those who formed L'Entente Anarchist who joined the new FA and then dissolved L'Entente. The new base principles of the FA were written by the individualist anarchist Charles Auguste Bontemps and the non platformist anarcho communist Maurice Joyeux, which established an organization with a plurality of tendencies and autonomy of group organized around synthesist principles. According to historian Cedric Guerin, the unconditional rejection of Marxism became from that moment onwards an identity element of the new Federation anarchist. And this was motivated in a big part after the previous conflict with George Fontanese and his OPB. In Italy, the Italian Anarchist Federation was founded in 1945 in Carrara. It adopted an associative pact and the anarchist program of Errico Malatesta. It decided to publish the weekly Umanita Nova, retaking the name of the journal published by Errico Malatesta. Inside the FAI a tendency grouped as GAAP, Anarchist Groups of Proletarian Action led by Pier Carlo Mazzini was founded which "...proposed a libertarian party with an anarchist theory and practice adapted to the new economic, political and social reality of post-war Italy, with an internationalist outlook and effective presence in the workplaces." The GAAP allied themselves with the similar development within the French anarchist movement as led by George Fontanese. In Italy in 1945, during the founding Congress of the Italian Anarchist Federation, there was a group of individualist anarchists led by Cesare Zaccaria who was an important anarchist of the time. A tendency which didn't identify either with the more classical FAI or with the GAAP started to emerge as local groups. These groups emphasized direct action, informal affinity groups and expropriation for financing anarchist activity. 
From within these groups the influential insurrectionary anarchist Alfredo Maria Bonanno will emerge influenced by the practice of the Spanish exiled anarchist José Luis Facerias. Anarchism continued to be influential in important literary and intellectual personalities of the time such as Albert Camus, Herbert Reed, Paul Goodman, Dwight MacDonald, Allen Ginsberg, Julian Beck and the French surrealist group led by André Breton which now openly embraced anarchism and collaborated in the Fédération Anarchiste. In 1952 Breton wrote, "...it was in the black mirror of anarchism that surrealism first recognized itself." Breton was consistent in his support for the Francophone Anarchist Federation and he continued to offer his solidarity after the platformists around Fontenis transformed the Fédération Anarchiste into the Fédération Communiste Libertaire. He was one of the few intellectuals who continued to offer his support to the FCL during the Algerian War when the FCL suffered severe repression and was forced underground. He sheltered Fontenis whilst he was in hiding. He refused to take sides on the splits in the French anarchist movement and both he and Perret expressed solidarity as well with the new Fédération anarchiste set up by the synthesist anarchists and worked in the anti-fascist committees of the 60s alongside the Fédération anarchiste. Anarcho-pacifism became influential in the anti-nuclear movement and anti-war movements of the time as can be seen in the activism and writings of the English anarchist member of Campaign for Nuclear Disarmament Alex Comfort or the similar activism of the American Catholic anarcho-pacifists Ammon Hennessy and Dorothy Day. Anarcho-pacifism became a basis for a critique of militarism on both sides of the Cold War. The resurgence of anarchist ideas during this period is well documented in Robert Graham's Anarchism, A Documentary History of Libertarian Ideas, Volume 2, The Emergence of the New Anarchism 1939 Late 20th century A surge of popular interest in anarchism occurred in Western nations during the 1960s and 1970s. Anarchism was influential in the counterculture of the 1960s and anarchists actively participated in the late 60s students and workers' revolts. During the ex-Congress of the Italian Anarchist Federation in Carrara in 1965, a group decided to split off from this organization and created the Gruppi di Iniziativa Anarchica. In the 70s, it was mostly composed of veteran individualist anarchists with an of pacifism orientation, naturism, etc. In 1968 in Carrara, Italy the International of Anarchist Federations was founded during an international anarchist conference held there in 1968 by the three existing European federations of France, the Italian and the Iberian Anarchist Federation as well as the Bulgarian Federation in French exile. During the events of May 68 the anarchist groups active in France were Fédération Anarchiste, Mouvement Communiste Libertaire, Union Fédérale des Anarchistes, Alliance Ouvrière Anarchiste, Union des Groupes Anarchistes Communistes, Noir et Rouge, Confédération Nationale du Travail, Union Anarcho-Syndicaliste, Organisation Révolutionnaire Anarchiste, Cahiers Socialistes Libertaires, A Contra Current, La Révolution Proletarienne, and the publications close to Émile Armand. In the United Kingdom in the 1970s this was associated with the punk rock movement, as exemplified by bands such as Crass and the Sex Pistols. The housing and employment crisis in most of Western Europe led to the formation of communes and squatter movements like that of Barcelona, Spain. In Denmark, squatters occupied a disused military base and declared the Freetown Christiania, an autonomous haven in central Copenhagen. Since the revival of anarchism in the mid-20th century, a number of new movements and schools of thought emerged. Although feminist tendencies have always been a part of the anarchist movement in the form of anarcho-feminism, they returned with vigor during the second wave of feminism in the 1960s. The American civil rights movement and the movement against the war in Vietnam also contributed to the revival of North American anarchism. European anarchism of the late 20th century drew much of its strength from the labor movement, and both have incorporated animal rights activism. In the early 1970s, a platformist tendency emerged within the Italian Anarchist Federation which argued for more strategic coherence and social insertion in the workers' movement while rejecting the Sintesist associative pact of Malatesta which the FAI adhered to. 
These groups started organizing themselves outside the FAI in organizations such as ORA from Liguria which organized a congress attended by 250 delegates of grupos from 60 locations. This movement was influential in the autonomia movements of the 1970s. They published Front Libertario della Lata di Class in Bologna and Comunismo Libertario from Modena. The Federation of Anarchist Communists Federazione dei Comunisti Anarchici, or FDCA, was established in 1985 in Italy from the fusion of the Organizzazione Revolutionaria Anarchica Revolutionary Anarchist Organization and the Union dei Comunisti Anarchici della Toscana Tuscan Union of Anarchist Communists. In the 1970s in France the Fédération Anarchiste evolved into a joining of the principles of both synthesis anarchism and platformism but later the platformist organization's Libertarian Communist Organization France in 1976 and Alternative Libertaire in 1991 appeared with this last one existing until today alongside the synthesist Fédération Anarchiste. The Direct Action Movement was formed in 1979, when the one remaining SWF branch, along with other smaller anarchist groups, decided to form a new organization of anarcho-syndicalists in Britain. The dam was highly involved in the miners' strike as well as a series of industrial disputes later in the 1980s, including the Ardbride dispute in Ardrossan, Scotland, involving a supplier to Laura Ashley, for which the dam received international support. From 1988 in Scotland, then England and Wales, the dam was active in opposing the poll tax. In 1994 it adopted its current name, having previously been the Direct Action Movement since 1979, and before that the Syndicalist Workers' Federation since 1950. In March 1994, dam changed its name to the Solidarity Federation. Presently, the Solidarity Federation publishes the quarterly magazine Direct Action presently on hiatus and the newspaper Catalyst. Several locals and networks also publish their own newsletters. Along with the Anarchist Federation it is one of the two national anarchist federations active in the UK at the present time. The Anarchist Federation AF is a federation of anarcho-communists in Great Britain and Ireland. The federation was founded as the Anarchist Communist Federation in March 1986 by the Anarchist Communist Discussion Group, which had coalesced around two anarcho-communists who had returned from France and began selling the pamphlets of the defunct libertarian communist group Tendency, and members of Syndicalist Fight. The Anarchist Federation is a member organization of the Anarchist International of Anarchist Federations IAFIFA, but also has its own secretariat responsible for regions of the world that do not have IAFIFA members. 21st century Anarchist anthropologist David Greber and anarchist historian André Grabasic have posited a rupture between generations of anarchism, with those who often still have not shaken the sectarian habits of the 19th century contrasted with the younger activists who are much more informed, among other elements, by indigenous, feminist, ecological, and cultural critical ideas, and who around the start of the 21st century formed by far the majority of anarchists. Around the start of the 21st century, anarchism grew in popularity and influence as part of the anti-war, anti-capitalist, and anti-globalization movements. Anarchists became known for their involvement in protests against the meetings of the World Trade Organization WTO, Group of Eight and the World Economic Forum. Some anarchist factions at these protests engaged in rioting, property destruction, and violent confrontations with police. These actions were precipitated by ad hoc, leaderless, anonymous cadres known as black blocs. Other organizational tactics pioneered in this time include security culture, affinity groups, and the use of decentralized technologies such as the Internet. A significant event of this period was the confrontations at WTO conference in Seattle in 1999. According to anarchist scholar Simon Critchley, Contemporary anarchism can be seen as a powerful critique of the pseudo-libertarianism of contemporary neoliberalism. One might say that contemporary anarchism is about responsibility, whether sexual, ecological, or socio-economic, it flows from an experience of conscience about the manifold ways in which the West ravages the rest, it is an ethical outrage at the yawning inequality, impoverishment, and disenfranchisement that is so palpable locally and globally. 
International anarchist federations in existence include the International of Anarchist Federations, the International Workers' Association, and International Libertarian Solidarity. The largest organized anarchist movement today is in Spain, in the form of the Confederación General del Trabajo and the CNT. CGT membership was estimated to be around 100,000 for 2003. Other active syndicalist movements include in Sweden the Central Organization of the Workers of Sweden and the Swedish Anarcho-Syndicalist Youth Federation, the CNT8 in France, the Union Syndicale Italiana in Italy, in the United States Workers' Solidarity Alliance and the United Kingdom Solidarity Federation. The Revolutionary Industrial Unionist Industrial Workers of the World, claiming 2,000 paying members, and the International Workers Association, an anarcho-syndicalist successor to the First International, also remain active. The informal anarchist federation not to be confused with the Synthesist Italian Anarchist Federation, also FAI, is an Italian insurrectionary anarchist organization. It has been described by Italian intelligence sources as a horizontal structure of various anarchist terrorist groups, united in their beliefs in revolutionary armed action. In 2003, the group claimed responsibility for a bomb campaign targeting several European Union institutions. During the first years of the 2000s, the Iberian Federation of Libertarian Youth in Spain started to evolve towards insurrectionary anarchist positions and its differences with anarcho-syndicalism became more evident due to the influence of the Black Bloc in alter-globalization protests and the examples of developments from Italy and Greece. Afterwards it will receive some important repression from the state which leads it towards inactivity in the year 2007 it re-establishes itself as the FIJL since it did not have news from the other insurrectionist organization, but after finding out of a communique by the insurrectionist organization it decides to name itself Iberian Federation of Anarchist Youth Federación Iberica de Juventudes Anarchistas or FIJA, but knowing that they are the continuing organization to the previous FIJL from the 1990s to the past. They publish a newspaper called El Fuel. In March 2012, the FIJL of insurrectionist tendencies decides to not continue and so the FIJA goes to call itself again FIJL. Topic. Related pages International Anarchist Congresses List of anarchist organizations List of anarchist communities Topic. References Topic. External links History of Anarchism. Kate Sharpley Library.